what's going on youtube this is marcus and i am back with another video um i wanted to come on here real quick and just kind of give y'all this i guess you can call it a story time so um today i came out to my mom as being gay well i wouldn't necessarily say came out because she kind of already knew she was just waiting on me to say something I had to put this hat on because I still haven't went to the barbershop yet and my hair is not it's not giving what it's what it needs to give. But anyway, so yeah, I came out to my mom and told her, you know, that I was gay. Now mind you, I, I sent her a text <laughs> I sent her a text message. But yeah, I pretty much, you know, just told her what it was and she was just like I like I already knew I was just waiting on you to you know say it yourself um so yeah that was the end of that but i want to kind of give y'all a little bit of background um because i know people are gonna have questions now let me also put this out here i still love god I still have a relationship with God. So please don't jump in my comments trying to quote scriptures and do all that. I know what the Bible say, but this is my life. So let me say, going back to, and you know, it's interesting because I can't really pinpoint um, Well, no, I take that back. I can't actually pinpoint somewhat when I actually started liking guys or finding guys attractive because when I was younger, because, you know, some people say, oh, I always knew I was gay. You know what I'm saying? I knew since I was four years old, <laughs> more power to you. But that's that's not my story. I, I liked girls in the beginning. Um, I think around... I want to say around maybe eighth grade. That was kind of when I was going through the whole thing of seeing a guy and thinking he's cute. You know, and things of that nature. So, and that was also around the time when me and my mom had the self-talk. And this was also the first time that she ever asked me. So, even back then, I think she kind of suspected. But that was the first time she had ever asked me, you know, if I like girls. So, like I said, she was supposed to been coming to give me the sex talk i guess me and my stepdad's relationship was trash back then so um i wasn't gonna feel comfortable talking to him about that but yeah she was giving me the little sex talk and then she was like you know what i'm saying like i can show you how to put on a condom and i was like miss mamas you, you're doing too much but i was just like no i'm good and then that's when she said you do like girls don't you and i was like yeah now like i said at that time i was still kind of like i guess you can say transitioning into um finding dudes attractive or cute or whatever so you know at that time i was like yeah so going through life i think when i got to ninth grade i think that was really when um, I really started noticing guys more, noticing guys that I thought were attractive. Now, mind you, it's crazy because back then, I'm saying this like I'm like 50s, but back then when I was in middle school, so that was what, I'm 31 now, so eighth grade, maybe like 18 years 18 years yeah 18 years ago somewhere around there when i was in eighth grade it was a guy okay i'm i'm bring it back market so it's interesting how times have changed because now we see a lot of guys that are younger that are living their authentic selves i mean even in middle school whereas back when i was in middle school boys wasn't really like I don't want to say advertising their gayness, but they weren't really like out and open with it. But we did have this one guy that I went to school with. His name was Sean. And he was very flamboyant. Um, 
extremely feminine. I think he was also a cheerleader. Um, but he and I didn't really kind of like become friends until ninth grade. We ended up going to the same high school. And so that's when we kind of started like, well, I wouldn't say we developed a friendship, but we started associating with each other more. And then we kind of lost contact after that because I ended up going to another school my sophomore through senior year. Um, but yeah, like I said, when I got to ninth grade, there's really when I started noticing guys and, and finding them like attractive. It wasn't just cute anymore. It was like, you know, attractive, fine, you know, all of that. So And mind you, this is prior to go, starting to go to church. Um, but back in that time, specifically, there was a whole lot of... Um, I mean, you still have people, even today's time, that they make little, little slick remarks or crack jokes about a dude that's gay or, or if you suspect he's gay because of his mannerisms, where back then it was even worse and so I kind of there was definitely a confidence issue there because I was still struggling with my sexuality at that time I was always more comfortable around girls um because it I could I could relate to them so so to speak so you know you know I would be sitting around with them and they we talk about you know this dude was so fine or this dude was so fine and I'd be sitting there like yeah he well in my head I would be saying and I wouldn't say it out loud versus the dudes were like these super macho dudes um if if there was just an ounce of femininity in you they was clowning you calling you gay y'all know the f word you know, and know stuff like that so i wasn't really feeling with them you know like that and so like i said there was definitely a confidence issue there because i didn't feel comfortable walking in my what i felt like was my identity at the time um because i was already a like a I don't want to say outsider, but I wasn't like a popular person either. So I was like kind of in between. And so I kind of felt like if I had been open and honest about my sexuality at that time, that definitely would have pushed me, you know, on the outskirts. But so kept it under wraps all this time. When I around 16, I was a junior in high school. That was when we started going to church. Now, churches are somewhat more progressive as it pertains to the lgbtq well i'll say as it pertains to how they handle people of the lgbtq community a lot of churches are more progressive more loving more welcoming and stuff like that but there but there's always going to be this stigma with the church as a whole as it pertains to people in the lgbtq community so going to church um around i got baptized at 17 because i was a senior in high school i remember november 28th 2008 um got baptized all of that and so for me being in church is kind of how can i say it it's still that struggle because you are in church and you're hearing that this type of way is wrong. And so you praying, saying, God, take it away from me. And it's still here. Now, mind you, like I've said in previous videos, I've been a part of that church for 16 years. Praying, you know, even, you know, giving my my life to God, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit, all of that stuff. It's still, it was still there. And actually, the attraction actually got stronger as time progressed hence now we're here where we at right now and before anybody asks if you have not watched any of my previous videos know that does not have anything to do with why i left chose why i left that church because i did a video talking about that as well um so like i said and it's interesting because back when i was coming up well why do i keep talking like i'm in my 50s when i was younger like high school early college years like early 20s 
they really he didn't preach on homosexuality a lot but when he did he really like hammered in on it i mean even if we when we went to visit other churches if they had you know a, a gay person or not even gay maybe they the guy just has you know feminine manner of especially if he was a choir director you know there was you know people from my church i would see them leaning over whispering to this person or pointing and you know making faces and all of that and so it's kind of like It, it pushes you further into your shell because it's like, how can I be open and honest about who I am when because on one hand, it's kind of like, well, they doing that to that person. They not going to do that to me. But it's, it's one of those situations where if they doing it to that person, they're doing it to you as well. And so like I said, it pushed me further into that, into the whole, further into, you know, having the confidence issues and all that. Because it's like, you want to be, because one of the things about God, he can only deal with you when you come to him in your truth and your honesty. And I wasn't doing it. I was trying to put up this, this facade of what I felt like I was I was supposed to be or what I needed to be versus coming and being open and honest about who I am. Um so yeah. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything. One of the things that I will say when I think why it took me so long also is because I didn't want to have to deal with the whole we already knew. It's like what you mean you already knew? Like, you can't at least act surprised. Now, mind you, going, I'm going to have to go back to the text message that I sent my mom. I texted her and was like, hey, because it was just like I was just thinking about some things earlier today. And it just like was really like weighing heavy on me. Like, you need to say something. So I texted her like, hey, you busy? She texted me back and was like, no, what's up? And I was like, I need to tell you something, but you probably already know. And she was like, what? And I was like, I'm gay. And so she writes back. And was like, bruh, I thought you was really about to tell me something. So, you, you mean to tell me you couldn't at least act like you were surprised? Let me just say this. I, life is too short. I feel like life is too short to be having to hide yourself. Or what, hide yourself from people. Um, and I honestly feel like. I almost started tearing up, but I honestly feel like if my grandma was still here, she would have told me to to be myself and live in my truth. Um, yeah, like life is too short to be so concerned about other people's views and opinions about your life um, that you like close like close yourself off from people or having to feel like you got to, to hide yourself or having to put up this front or put up this facade about who you are. Um. So, yeah, y'all, that's where I am. This is my story. Um. There's more to it, but for some reason when I get on camera, I'll be, I be forgetting what I want to talk about. But, yeah, y'all, Um. I want to say thank you to everybody that has supported my channel down through the years i think i started doing youtube in like 2011 maybe um so yeah i want to say thank y'all i hopefully y'all will continue on this journey with me if not it was nice knowing you this is me this is who i am this is what it is take it or leave it um but anyway that's all i wanted to come on here and talk about i thank y'all for tuning in be sure to give this a thumbs up also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so and post the notif and click the notification bell so that you will be notified whenever I post content to this channel. And I will talk to y'all later.